Hi, I'm Mark, and welcome to the current Outside Views report on Russia's war of aggression against Ukraine. And yes, it is a war. Electronic components from European companies are said to be installed in drones that Russia is using to attack Ukraine. But how are the manufacturers reacting on this? Well, swarms of Russian kamikaze drones attack Ukraine almost every day, and most are of Iranian design. But apparently it's also Western technology that makes Tehran's Shahed models achieve their goal. And these include German components such as a gasoline pump or a transistor. The British Guardian reports on a document that the Ukrainian government is said to have presented at the G7 summit in August. According to this, more than 50 electrical components from companies from several European countries were found in the Shahed 131 and Shahed 136 models. According to The Guardian, the report states that these are companies whose headquarters are in Switzerland, the Netherlands, Poland and here in Germany. There are also manufacturers from Canada, the USA and Japan. A petrol pump is to be built in Poland by a German company, which in turn has a British parent company. The pump is said to have been found in a Shahed 136 drone. These pumps were actually developed for the automotive industry. And according to the report, a transistor and a network component in the drone also came from the company International Rectifier, which is owned by the German technology company Infineon. Such components are sold worldwide for very different applications. In the case of the petrol pump, the company concerned had already said some time ago that it was not supplying to Iran. A spokesman for Infineon told The Guardian that it had stopped doing business with Russia and was not exporting to Iran. In general, compliance with applicable laws is of utmost importance to Infineon and we have established strict policies and processes to comply with these laws. We instruct our customers, including dealers, to conduct consecutive sales only in accordance with applicable rules. That's what Infineon said in a statement. The Swiss company Ublox is trying to prevent the use of its GPS trackers for weapons that are also said to have been discovered in Shahed's. Since 2002, company guidelines have strictly prohibited their use in weapons or weapon systems, including targeting devices, according to a spokesman. But controlling resales is not easy for manufacturers and in many cases even impossible. The government document does not blame the companies. Rather, it is pointed out that global trade in such components is poorly or not at all controlled. Iran is deliberately trying to use parts that are freely available. The components apparently find their way to the Iranian production facilities through several intermediaries. They are supposed to reach Iran via Turkey, India, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Vietnam and Costa Rica. Tehran is now said to have outsourced part of its, of its production to Syria and Shahed drones are already being assembled in Russia itself as well. But uh, Hothaus, an MEP who sits on the European Parliament's Defence and Security Subcommittee, told The Guardian that coordination between the EU's intelligence services had been insufficient to combat abuses of Western components. He says, I think many European intelligence agencies don't even think about sanctions. Back in July, the head of the Ukrainian presidential office, Andrei Yermak, pointed out Western technology in Shahed drones. These were found on a model that had been shot down and published a photo that supposedly shows a component with the inscription made in Ireland. Western technology is not only used in drones against Ukraine. Russia, for example, needs microchips for its computers and phones as well as military equipment. Moscow apparently cannot produce enough chips itself as the US magazine Newsweek quotes a report in the Russian daily newspaper Kommersant. Accordingly, current demand is three times higher than domestic production capacities. Although there is a directive from the Kremlin to become independent of technology from the West, the reality is different. 
According to research by the independent Russian news website Verska, Russia imported foreign microchips worth $502 million in the first half of the year still. And if you want to know more about the developments in this war, the next video is right here on the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.